What is going on everybody? Jerry with 3DHP and yes, the Elegoo Centauri Carbon is here and we're going to talk about it right after this. Welcome back everybody. Yes, let's talk about an amazing printer that you're going to want to buy. You need this. It is a killer printer. Well, anyway, a bunch of my friends over the last four weeks got together in my weekly live stream and I asked for donations and they came through for me and they all donated enough money that I was able to purchase this printer from Elegoo with a roll of their filament. It came last Friday. I unboxed it Saturday. I may or may not show a little clip of that real fast right here, but I've been printing with it all week. Today is Wednesday and oh my God, I have an excellent carbon right over there. But let me tell you, for what, a fifth of the price? This Elegoo Centauri Carbon is an amazing printer. It prints perfect. I've had no trouble. I'm not saying that I won't have trouble in the future. You never know. Things happen. But I have been printing some amazing things with this printer. When you first unbox it, it's got a glass top. It has a glass door on it. Let's turn on the light right there. You can see inside. The light is not real bright, but it, it, it works. The glass top, you have to be careful. It has a carrying handle so you can pick it up and you can look down in from the top. It's got steel rails. Yeah, it's a very well-built machine. It's very cool. It's 256 by 256 by 256. When you first get it, I didn't pay attention to the paperwork. There's paperwork. You're supposed to read it. I only read paperwork when I have trouble. I like looking at pictures. And there's three red X's. One there, one there, one in the back. You take out three little bolts, plug it in, you're ready to go. You come to the screen and you plug it in, and it wants you to go through calibration. It goes through all kinds of calibrations. One of them is really super loud, but, but then that's the only time I've ever heard it is when it first calibrates that one thing. It's one of the fans is really loud. But yeah, it's killer. It's got a two-sided flex plate made for different types of materials, which is listed right there on the bottom. What both sides are for. Let's lay it back in place. It's got notches in the back. Lays back in place. Let's take a look on the inside. And is it bigger on the inside? Hmm, it may be. See if we can swing that around there. And look. There's a camera. Where's that? There it is. It's got a camera. It has killer quality. Really super good quality. It actually looks sharper than my X1 Carbon's quality on its camera. It's a little bit higher resolution. The frame rates don't seem to be so great, but the resolution is great. And you come down here, the control panel. You know, you can go through it. You can pick different files on, on it that you want to print with. Very responsive. Oh, you turn up your brightness right here. I didn't know that. I think it must be all the way on. Screen off. Screen always on. I wish the light was always on. I'll have to look through it. Maybe it is. But I noticed that when I was doing some time lapses initially, I didn't realize the first couple time lapses I didn't do is on my live stream, my first two prints. And I didn't realize, I didn't have it all, I hadn't read through it and went through the screen yet. I didn't time lapse the first couple prints. And then on a couple prints, when I turned on the printer, I forgot to turn on the light. A little button right there turns on the light. Without it, you're not going to be able to see your time lapse very well. So I'll have to see if there's an always on for that. But it's set up on Wi-Fi. Come to the USB stick you can add files to. Or, you know, the slicer, it has, it's like Orca or Bamboo Studios. It's an LG slicer. You, I downloaded it, loaded it up. It looks exactly like Orca slicer. Works fine. Screens are the same. Everything is just plug and play. Great. Ready to go. <clears throat> beautiful printer. Beautiful machine. Let me turn around the backside and we'll show you what the backside looks like. Okay, here's the back side of the machine. Now, the filament I have on there, that's Rainbow from Layerworks. From my friend Trevor with the Bar 3D, he sells filament. And that is some really beautiful stuff. We'll see that in a minute. We got a filament runout sensor. Everything appears to be metal. Very well built. And here's a little poop chute, a little thing to catch waste in the back. This is one of my prints. This was the second thing I printed out on it. It looks like a little printer. Very cool. Now, of course, if and when in the future they come out with an AMS for this, you'd need something bigger. 
But right now, when you do filament changes, it drops it right down there in the, in the bottom. So that is perfect for that. You just loosen up these two little screws here, bolts, screws, whatever you're going to call them. And you hook that on the back. Uh, power cord appears to be about five foot long, on and off right there. Now let's flip it right back around to the front side. Alrighty, here and we're back. Yeah, okay, let's look at some of these prints. Okay, the first thing I did on my live stream was this benchy. And I hope the you can see the quality of it. Yes, there's a line there, which I would say is a water line. But as far as for the quality, it looks almost perfect. It looks better than I see on most printers. This was on the SD card. I didn't slice this file. It's when they had sliced and they worked out all the how they fine-tuned it, but that is beautiful. Then she came out great. And then it came with a blade in the accessory pack. So you have a scraper right here you can print out. You just attach the razor blade to it with the pieces. It's got a little holder so it stands up once you put it on it. And here's this little Eiffel Tower. Check this out. All these things here in gray that you're going to see, most of them. Well, not all of them. A bunch of them are on the SD card. This vase here is on the SD card. I didn't size it up at all. I just went with the size it was uh, sliced at. A little, I think it's a Buddha. A little fat baby Buddha. Not very good. And then these brackets here, I believe, go on the left side of the printer. They're to hold build plates. So when you buy more build plates, you can just mount these brackets right there on the side. You know, two of them upright. One left, one right. And your build plate slips down in and uh, you can store them right on the side of the printer. And when I got the printer, I ordered a roll of LU filament that I'm trying out here. They're PLA. That's what I'm, I printed all these with right here. And then I jumped over on Maker World. Now, they have their own site. I can't think of the name of it. I'll throw it here on the screen. It's like a Maker World that they're building. I looked around on there for stuff. But most of these things, I think I got off uh, Maker World. Check out this pumpkin. Now, when I printed him, I had organic supports. And yes, they were on the inside. And they, I had to reach in, in the eyes there and pull them all out with pliers. And uh, like a screwdriver, knock them loose. And some of the teeth got screwed up. It's a shame that happened. They'll need to be filed down or just leave them broken. But the organic supports, the automatic organic supports weren't perfect. But that is a beautiful pumpkin. And I believe I sized him up. I don't remember what, what to, but yeah, that came out great. Then there's another version where you don't have the, the lid is open on the bottom. So you could put a, a light or something inside of it to flickers. And then check out this skull apple. Look at the quality. Of course, I had organic supports on this. I'll show you on the screen before the video is over all these printing in the time lapse. But yeah, came out beautiful. I love the quality there. And check out this spider. Mechanical spider. This is also off of uh, Maker World, steam pump. And as you see, one thing right below the eye is broke. When I was pulling off supports, it broke. Now, when I first started printing this with organic supports, I noticed that some of the, I had some string inside the printer and I had to stop it. So when I re-sliced it, I painted on supports on the tips. So I went on all those tips and I painted them on and then it done its organic supports and, and then everything worked out fine. Well, those tips came out fine, and I guess I overlooked the two on the mouth. They didn't print quite right, but that is a beautiful print. Came out very nice. And then Trevor uh, with Navar 3D Layer Works, I he's been on my live streams before, and I've reviewed his film in the past. He has all kinds of amazing filament. I've downloaded these roses, and there's a whole bunch of them. The stem prints separately. 
Now, the two stems originally had up and down, and on the time lapse they failed. One of them fell over, so I stopped it, and then I laid them over on their side and reprinted them. But that's why they're all in red. They're not multicolor like the rose. But yeah, check that out. That is unbelievable. Maker World, there's a pile. There's like, I don't know, 10 different roses. I didn't really pay attention to what was different about them, but that is so amazing. Look at that. That would be so beautiful to print these and give somebody, make them black, whatever you want. Be great for any holiday, I think. I just love skulls. Loving the colors. These are two different skull files. I'm not sure what the difference is there, but two different files. Came out amazing. And then I found this hand. Check this out. Also done on the rainbow filament. A couple little minor strings there on it. At first, when I first sliced it, I added supports. I'm like, wait a minute, everything's pointing up in there. You don't need supports. So then I printed that as you see it, no supports on it. That's a couple minor strings, but it came almost 100% perfect. This is sellable, I mean quality. This is, what I mean by that is when I make a print or I print something, I look at it and I say, would I buy this? If I was at the store and this item was for sale, it's a good enough quality to me that I would pay for it. And yeah, these all came out amazing. And I am not in any way being paid. I, this was not sent to me by all of you for free of charge. I paid for it with my own money that was donated to me. But my honest opinion is, this is a killer machine. I love it. And I'm loving it. I haven't had any trouble yet. I'm sure things will go wrong. Things always do. But at the moment, it is printing perfect. And check out this Viking skull. Now, when I first went to Prince's, I'm like, how is this going to come out in rainbow? I was unsure how this was going to look. But check that out. It's pretty obvious. That's badass. Now, one tip. See the tip on the horn there? There's a minor bit of stringing, minor, and this tip over here kind of failed. So one of the supports had broke on it. But that can be cleaned up with some nippers, and you won't even really notice it. It's on the back of the model. And I think there in his teeth, i got to clean up a little bit better. But this printed overnight, and I checked got it this morning. But yeah, I don't know what to say, man. I, I just, guys, I highly recommend this printer. Great machine. Very well built. Um, do I have any negatives? Yeah, I got one negative. When you start it up, you got to turn on. You got to remember to turn a light on. Otherwise, it's printing in the dark. You can't see what's going on. Or if you time lapse, it might not have a time lapse. Now I have to check to see if there's an always on. I don't know if there is or not. So, but that's one little tiny gripe that I have. And next, in the slicer, once you slice it and you hit print, it doesn't automatically take you to the next screen where you can watch a time lapse. You have to manually click on the next screen. Not a big deal at all. It's very simple, very minor. And let's take a look at the goodies that came with it. Okay, here's everything that comes with it. When you first open up the top of the machine, you got the paperwork. That's reminding you about the glass in the top of it. There's glass in the very top. You'll see it. When you go to unpack, you take that out of the foam. And it just talks about it's doing its self-checks, installing the touch screen, which clips right on the front there. And that's got a little booklet here, user manual. Just like all printers have. Talks about what comes with the printer, you know, what's where. And how to set things up. Very simple, very easy. It's not hard, not difficult in any way. You don't have to have already owned a 3D printer in the past to know how to use this. And then all the stuff we got right here, look. We got some super glue, some wrenches. A sample bit of PLA, which is completely worthless. We have some lube, needle, razor blade. That's the razor blade would be for this right here, the scraper. But yeah, come on guys, company, send out more filament. This little sample, you know I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to throw it away. It'll go on the shelf. But always send out at least a half spool, if not more. But you keep your costs down on your printer. I understand that's why I did such a small sample. But I highly recommend this to anybody. doesn't matter if you're a new user or you've been printing for 10 years. This printer is for you. It's an awesome printer. If you want to have a, a whole fleet of these machines, it is great. And then the Centuri. This is a Centuri Carbon. And any day now, they're coming out with just a Centuri. 
It won't have the sides on it. It won't be enclosed. It's like a hundred dollars cheaper than this one. But this at two ninety nine is a steal. It is a great machine. I can't, you know, if I had the money and I didn't have all this kind of stuff, I might want more of these. But it's a beautiful machine. You know, I just want to thank all my channel members, subscribers, those that donated to me. We'll list everybody here on the screen. I appreciate each and every one of you. But yeah, highly recommend it. Down below in the description, I'll have an uh, affiliate link to Amazon if you want to purchase this through my link. Or I have a link where you can buy it through Elegoo. Now, one thing about that, I loaded this in my cart on Elegoo. They gave me a $10 coupon. I loaded this in my cart on Amazon. I have Prime, which basically means free shipping, even though I pay $140 a year for it. And all said and done, Amazon wanted $40 in tax. Elegoo wanted $30 shipping, but Elegoo still came in $40 cheaper. So I ordered from Elegoo, and here's the kicker. I got it in two days. The film that came the next day from FedEx and UPS delivered the printer two days later. Amazon had one day shipping, Elegoo, so they must have them a warehouse probably in California where they got them stocked up. Got it in two days, no waiting. Beautiful machine, highly love it. I just have to make room for it over here in my mess of everything. And that's why I kind of rolled out this extra table to self set this on for filming. I didn't really have anywhere. I got such a mess everywhere. But I highly recommend this machine. You do want this. It's a great machine. Um, I'll throw some of the specs here on the screen here at the end of the video. The hot end I've never taken off. It's got a cutter on it. Oh, yeah. It's got a cutter automatically on it. Where it cuts film when it changes. And there's a support wing in the back. But very cool. Yeah. Um, no complaints whatsoever. Love the machine. Oh, and the door, glass door only swings to about right there. So you don't want to be walking by the machine, bump into it, and try to swing it all the way back. It'll snap and break. So just remember that. That's its limits right there. But highly recommend it. Go buy one for yourself. Go buy a whole bunch for yourself. Please leave me a comment down below. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, you guys have a great day and happy printing. Later.